Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Amalgam core restorations are used on teeth greatly weakened by caries or previous restorations. The technique consists of placing pins into the remaining solid tooth tissue, providing pulpal protection and replacing the lost tooth tissue with amalgam. Mount the supplied natural bicuspid or molar tooth in the visodont so that previous restorations and caries are at or above the rubber gingival shroud. Make sure that the tooth is in occlusion. Check working and balancing uh, occlusion. Remove all of the carious areas and previous restorations and cement bases from the tooth using the appropriate cutting instruments and excavating instruments. Remove any weakened enamel and undermine cusps. For the purpose of this exercise, one half or less than one half of the coronal portion of the tooth should remain. Avoid exposing the pulp chamber of the tooth. Another technique which may be used to rapidly remove the tooth tissue is the rapid cut stone mounted on a dental lathe. Using this technique, the shoulder a shoulder must be developed and refined using a carbide burr or a diamond instrument to create a flat area for the subsequent placement of pins. The shoulder should be about at the height of the free gingival margin and should be about one and one half millimeters in width. Any unsupported enamel is now removed from the cervical area of the shoulder using a gingival marginal trimmer. We now have a well-developed shoulder and extension into the distal groove of the occlusal surface of the tooth and the pulp is not exposed. We are now planning the placement of the pinholes and placing four pencil dots where we want to place the pins. You must remember the pins cannot penetrate into the pulp of the tooth or cannot run outside of the tooth into the periodontal membrane. Countersunk areas are now being placed for the pins using a half round burr mounted in the air rotor corresponding to the penciled areas. The countersink areas and corresponding pinholes should be just inside the dental enamel junction. TMS twist drills come in various forms. The twist drill on the left is a self-limiting twist drill. That is, it has a collar or stop on it so that the shank or cutting edge of the drill is only three millimeters in length. Thus, the twist drill will only sink into the two three millimeters before it stops. The twist drill on the right, in contrast, has no self-limiting stop and it is five millimeters in length. A pinhole which is five millimeters in depth can be placed into the tooth with this drill. This is the TMS minimum pin kit as supplied by the manufacturer. Inside it we have the twist drill, let's get it open here, twist drill, the wrench, and the pins. The self-limiting twist drill supplied with the kit is used to drill the pinholes. The twist drill is placed into the dimple and with a pumping in and out type of motion the pinhole is drilled. Upon completion of the first pinhole which is placed to a depth of three millimeters the other pinholes are now drilled. Do not stop the twist drill in the tooth when drilling these pinholes as there is a great chance of breaking the twist drill off in a pinhole and it was, would be very difficult to get the drill out. Each pin is placed at a slightly different angle to the long axis of the tooth. In this way, there is no common line of draw and the amalgam is locked to the tooth. The depth of the pins are now checked using a pocket measuring probe. 
they should all be three millimeters in depth. The next step is to place pulpal medication. First, a thin layer of calcium hydroxide liner is placed over the pulpal floor and the deep areas of the, of the cavity. This is followed by a thin layer of varnish. The varnish is also placed on the dentin. Retentive areas are now placed into the remaining sound tooth tissue for retention of the zinc phosphate cement. A half round burr is used to do this. Inlay consistency zinc phosphate cement is placed in the retentive areas. Cement based consistency zinc phosphate cement is now placed over the pulpal floor of the tooth and any other necessary areas. Amalgam pluggers are useful in smoothing the cement. The TMS pin is placed into the wrench and the pin is inserted into the tooth. When the pin resists further turning into the tooth, it is fully seated into the tooth. Place the next pin into the tooth. These are tiny pins and sometimes it's difficult to manipulate them in the mouth. We now are to the point that we have all four pins into the tooth. We now want to take the tin EMS bending tool and bend the pins in toward the center of the tooth so that when the amalgam is placed, the pins are confined within the amalgam. This bending tool lets you bend in a number of directions. The occlusion now is checked to make sure that the pins do not hit the opposing tooth in centric occlusion centric relation or working or balancing movements. A copper band is selected for the tooth. It is important that to select a band which just tightly fits around the cervical area of the tooth. It must not be loose and sloppy at the cervical so that the amalgam will extrude out around the band. It is important that the band not be pushed too far cervically so as to lacerate the gingival tissue. The cervical area of the band is now marked with an explorer to follow the free gingival margin. The mesial and distal marginal ridge heights are now marked for trimming the band. An X is placed on the buccal surface of the band so it can be easily identified. The band is now trimmed with a crown and collar scissors. Some bands will need more trimming than others. The band is now tried back onto the tooth the occlusion is checked in all excursions to make sure that the opposing teeth do not strike the band. The band is remarked and readjusted if necessary. After the occlusal requirements of the band have been met, the roughened edges of the band are trimmed and smoothed with a green gemstone. These edges must be smooth both on the occlusal surface and the cervical area of the band. The band is now repositioned onto the tooth and the occlusion is again checked in all excursions to make sure that the 
opposing teeth do not strike the band. The band at this point can be annealed. This is done by heating the band to a cherry red and quenching it in water or alcohol. This makes the band soft and flexible. Some dentists prefer to work with a band unannealed, which makes it a little stiffer. The band is repositioned onto the tooth, and the soft band is recontoured with a number one plastic instrument. The band is also burnished around and into the cervical area of the tooth. This annealing process can be omitted and the unannealed softer band adapted to the tooth also. After the band has been contoured and readapted to the tooth, the occlusion is again checked to make sure that the opposing teeth do not strike the band. The centric occlusion working and balancing are both checked. The band is now ready to receive the amalgam. Small increments of amalgam are placed into the matrix band and with the use of appropriate condensers, the amalgam is condensed into the band. It is extremely important to condense the amalgam well around the pins. Five or six units of amalgam may be necessary to completely fill the band to the top. Larger condensers are used as we get toward the final filling of the band. After the band is totally filled, we are now ready to trim away the excess amalgam. Using a 26 spoon or some other appropriate carving instrument, the excess amalgam is removed from the restoration. Simple anatomy is carved into the restoration. The occlusion is again checked to assure that the amalgam is not in premature -con contact in centric occlusion or any other excursions. If, if it is in hyper occlusion, the excess amalgam is then removed. Articulating paper can be used to check the occlusion also. We would like to have just one centric occlusal stop on the tooth. If necessary, trim the amalgam so there is just that one centric occlusal stop simultaneously with the stops on the other teeth. This contact will prevent the opposing tooth or the restored tooth from extruding. Further occlusal anatomy can be carved into the restoration. The copper band is left in place undisturbed for a period of eight to 12 hours to allow the amalgam to harden. The copper band is then removed and an ideal crown preparation can be made in the amalgam. An impression taken, the crown fabricated, and finally, the crown is cemented. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.